So what I'm doing here is putting my hand basically on the PSIS of the pelvis and leaning that onto my fingers so that at the first point of significant compression of my fingers, I know the pelvis is moving and I've taken up as much movement as I can in the hip. So Lucas, again, I want you to just remain really nice and floppy through your hip. I'm trying to take the weight of Lucas's leg and I'm taking it to the point of when I first start to get a big compression onto my fingers, which is about there. So Lucas's free, easy hip movement is 100 degrees, maybe a little bit further, maybe 105. Everyone needs 90 degrees to sit, so we want to see it up above 90 degrees, but we also know, want to know what this athlete needs for their sport. So for cycling and rowing, this is nowhere near enough. Lucas is going to be using his back to be able to flex quite a bit through, through those, um, to get into the positions that he needs to for his sport. So for rowing, you need 130 degrees of hip joint flexion to be able to not go into too much lumbar flexion, which has been shown to be a predisposing factor for injury. For cycling, we want probably a little bit more, like more like 115 to 120 degrees. You, you're definitely in a flexed lumbar spine position in cycling, but we don't want to be hanging at the end of range all the time. So it's our first, first point of, of pelvic movement there, or free easy movement, and you're going to access your free easy movement when you're doing sport. You're not going to use your muscles really, really strongly to try and drag you into those stiffer ends of sport. It's always going to be your free easy movement that you want. The other thing that I'm doing when I'm assessing hip flexion is not just going, what is the range? I'm also trying to really figure out what vectors can I feel for muscle pull that are stopping me getting any further. So this gives me lots of great information about where I'm going to go to try and change this. So when I'm going up into this position, if I go, go above 90 and Lucas is tending to rotate into external rotation, maybe he's got probably a fair bit of either upregulation or tightness in his TFL. Okay, and if that's a problem because he's going to go out into abducted positions over the range of flexion that he needs, I might need to fix it. As I'm going up, I might just feel a, a pull in the posterior part of the hip joint, which is what I'm feeling in Lucas, and that just tells me for Lucas, if I wanted to improve this, I'd probably target his glutes as the main thing that we're resisting this movement. But in some athletes, you take the knee up and you get a real bunching up and a compression in the anterior hip joint, and you can really feel that, and it feels really bouncy. And... If you've got an upregulation of tone in your psoas, which is really common in acute episode of low back pain, and psoas has that attachment onto the front of the anterior hip joint capsule, you can get a real compression in the front of the hip. And then you might want to target psoas more to decrease the tension in psoas to try and improve hip flexion range of motion. Mm -hmm.